and gentlemen of the world, welcome to YSA TV, sponsored by Fugitive Inc. I'm your host, Chichi Yale, the baby mother's favorite dark skinned guy. Hey, 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 hey! Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh man, oh man, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shit is going away, your city getting sprayed up. Young niggas cater, they will never fade us, hallelujah. Oh man, oh man, hallelujah. Oh man, oh man. I'm here with the one and only. Arlen Moss, um, on YSA TV, we're here for culture, we're here for uh, entertainment, also politics, so we're here to discuss that. Arlen Moss, for the people that don't know you, can you give them a little bit about who you are and the show love movement within itself? <clears throat> yeah, show me the holy one, man, how this nigga in the city, how this in the state, man, but um, Say that. you know, I've been rocking for 10 plus with the music thing and shit. The show love movement is basically just the, you know, the anti-hate shit. So we just giving it up. We supporting each other. We building each other up. We giving back. You know what I'm saying? And we just uh, trying to grow the thing from the ground up. So we ain't doing no hating shit. We ain't talking down on niggas. We ain't gossiping. We just showing love, man. And that's what I'm representing. That was great. And um, I want to touch bases on him not saying him saying no hating at all. Like we anti. That's perfect. For the show love movement. Mm -hmm. For any movement, anti-hate, it's never about that. It's never about that. So that was great. You are and right. To describe that in that aspect, it's, it's become broader. So you know what? Shout out to the show love movement. Bad. Much love and respect. Um, so like, uh, uh, like, you know, as far as an artist goes, what, like, what, what inspires you to do this? Like, or what influences have you come across to make you become the artist that you are today? My inspiration is just um, growing up in the city, you feel me? Like, seeing all the shit that I seen growing up, all the shit I was exposed to, all the shit I've been through, and um, really wanting to be the voice for other people, you know what I'm saying, that don't have a platform to speak on, so to kind of be the voice of reason for them niggas or what they going through to get that to the masses so people can understand not what we doing, but why we doing what we doing, you understand? It's just, uh, it always been telling a story that ain't been told and speaking shit from my perspective for the world to hear, basically. My inspiration, that's a whole, my influences, excuse me, that's a whole nother, you know what I'm saying? Would you care to elaborate? My influences is uh, all over the place, man. Like, I came up off of, like, I'm an East Coast nigga, but I probably, the Hot Boys is probably my favorite group ever. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I came up. Well, that's, 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 that's quite interesting. Yeah, I came I would have never thought of it. I, I came up, but a lot of people wouldn't think that. I like the Hot Boys crazy. I fuck with Outkast crazy. Of course, whole Nas, Big, Pop, but it's just all over the place. You know what I'm saying? So, I fuck with, I fuck with a lot of niggas growing up. Yeah. Do you feel as though that created, like, a balance as far as artistry goes? Creativity? I feel like it gave me a balance um, flow-wise. Because, you know, when you're growing up and you and the niggas, you rap along with they shit. So listening to Bone Thugs, Outkast, Pop, Big, M, I feel like I learned a lot of them different flows and cadences. That's why I feel like I could do a lot of the shit I do now. Listening to all them niggas growing up. Well put. Um, do you remember your first 16? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. I don't think nobody would, nah. especially from if you probably trash them. though, but I don't remember that. <laughs> Hell no. I don't think nobody would. Like, so that's shit. If you've been doing this for eight, ten years or better. You remember your first 16? Not at all. No, I, no, 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 no. I just want to make sure I wasn't no, no. fucking. I don't, I don't even, know. Listen, I don't remember. I don't even remember stuff from last year. Mm -hmm. like, I, don't, I don't even remember that when I started rapping exactly. Right. <laughs> like, One day I was rapping for real. For real. Why well, I say television? Also, um, as far as the culture part goes, entertainment and uh, just the uh, productivity. Of everything that, that that goes within crafting your uh, your ability to be all at Mars, what do you think um, is like your main point of strength? I 
think uh, I think what I'm best at is taking what everybody else realized and putting my own spin on it. And I would say like like reading between the lines. So everybody will see A, B, and C happening. And my niche would be to say why I think A, B, and C is happening that I don't think anybody else would think of it in that way. You get what I'm saying? So a nigga will see that they built the arena a nigga that see that they paving the streets, and I don't know y'all black motherfuckers ain't about to be living here. So I just think my perspective and my awareness might be different than everybody else's. You know what I'm saying? I think that's one of my niches as far as, you know what I'm saying, just rapping and shit. But the shit that I've been through, the shit that I live, also separate me from a lot of niggas. Because a lot of niggas ain't go through the type of shit that we've been through. And they rapping the same shit. But they ain't that. I'm not the nigga that's gonna call them and say, yo, you ain't that, but I know when they listen, they can hear the difference. Because the shit that I really did and been through over and over and over and over. You feel what I'm saying? So I think that's what makes me different from a lot of niggas. And I can agree with that because you're absolutely right. Um, as a hip hop fan myself, as an All and Moss fan myself, um, I hear that in your music. So that's yeah. something that's it's definitely truthful. Uh, what's your top five that are alive? Um, Jay Z number one. Um, Hove number one. I want to say. Damn, this is tough. Number two for me is probably Big. I ain't never really put my top five in order, yo. That's crazy. Hold, big. Um, <laughs> that are alive. Hold, big. Um, damn, this is crazy, yo. I ain't never really thought of this shit like that. Hold, big. Um. Nas. I'm trying to squeeze the last two. It's crazy, yo. It really it's is. so many niggas I really fuck with hard body. Especially speaking of yeah, it's hard to the put names the names together. Whole the height of the names you just Nas, mentioned. So. Um, the comparison. Probably Andre 3000 and... Damn. Whole big Nas, Andre 3000. See, a lot of the niggas I really like, they, you know what I mean, their careers got cut short. Like, I liked the Big L a lot when I was young. Um, I liked the, I liked Mace a lot when I was young. All the niggas' careers got shortened. But whole Big Nas, Andre 3000, probably, um, I don't know, Beans probably in my top five. Mm. Beans probably in my top five. So that's what I see you running with? Yeah, Jay. mine, mine, yeah. You got Jay, Biggie, Nas. <laughs> Andre 3000 and uh, who was the last person you just mentioned? Mac. Yeah, Beans. And, and honorable mention is Stack because when Stack died, Stack was my favorite rapper, including Nate. He was definitely phenomenal. Stack was my favorite rapper. He was phenomenal. <laughs> Why Andre 3000? Man, when you listen to the nigga, his, his thought process and his, his flow is so far out that. He one of the few niggas that make me feel like, how the fuck he do that? Yeah. Not a lot of niggas make me feel like that because I'm nice. So when I hear, when I hear uh, 3000, it's just like, yo, this nigga some other shit. Like, his storytelling, his imagination, like I said, his flow cadences and patterns, the way he ride the beat, the fact that he was different from everybody, like, I fuck, I fuck with that nigga. Fuck. That, uh... That uh, international players anthem that I feel like that's one of the best verses in rap history. Like, shit crazy. Yeah. What city is Theory from? I'm city. from Bridgeport, Connecticut, man. Do you listen to any Connecticut. other artists from Bridgeport, Connecticut besides yourself? Yeah, hell yeah, of course. I listen to a bunch of niggas on my way. Who's some of your favorites? Uh, my favorites from out here. Uh, I rap with a bunch of niggas from out here. Um, I like, I like, uh, I like QB shit. QB. I like, I like. Uh, it's two QBs. We got QB Black Diamond. 
We got only one QB. Only one QB. You know what I'm saying? I fought with QB Black Time and Two on the battle tip. But QB, the the guy, he one of my favorites, favorite young niggas. Um I fuck with flip shit. I fuck with Mundo shit. Fact. Um, I like the young boy Mula Mula Guapo. I like what he got going on. Yeah, he going he going hard too. Um, I fuck with Honey Savage shit. I like her energy a lot. I be here all day, my nigga. I fuck with I fuck with Do shit. I fuck with Blaze shit. I fuck with Just shit. Wisey shit. I be here all day, my nigga. <laughs> That's a fact. So, yeah, there's a, a lot, lot, going there's on a lot of niggas who really giving it up. Like, like shout out to everyone that's doing. I ain't naming nobody because they from Bridgeport. Like, I really fuck with these niggas. Right. I fuck with crazy shit. Like, I like I don't want to forget nobody, but I fuck with a, a lot of niggas is going hard. Like, right. That's Kai. Like, I I be forgetting because everybody. I, like you know, I don't want to be put on the spot, but I fuck with a lot of niggas. I fuck with Kai shit hard body too. Like, like Kai, Kai going on too. Um. What Besides yourself, who do you feel is up next? Um, my fuckers always ask me that. I think uh, they always they always ask me who I think would be the first motherfuckers to pop from out here. But I think it'd probably be like, I think it'd probably be like K Doze, Mula Guap, or or was I on Key one of them? Wow, that's interesting as well. Yeah, shout out, you shout out, like shout out to all of the above. Yeah, yeah, I hear them. I like I like they whole, cause you know you know being in the shit that music is ten percent of this shit. Absolutely. So you know a lot of niggas campaigns and brands and, and positioning. I like them niggas for other that reasons. Works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They teams and all that shit. So. There's a lot that comes with that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that comes with that. So what can we be expected from Harlem as a whole? Show love to us coming soon. Show love to a lot of people. Fuck with uh, a lot of people got put on to me with show love the mixtape. And show love too is like, in my opinion, that shit is even better. And it's more concise, it's more to the point. So that should be dropping end of the year, top of the year. We doing more videos. The uh, the show love, the merch is like wildfire out here. Yeah, it is. Every time a yeah. batch come through, it's selling out in a day or two. So we got more of that coming through. You know what I'm saying? More merch, just different moves. And basically, uh, just trying to get the business right with everybody behind the scenes so we all can move. I mean, I can't explain it all, but just connecting the dots with everybody so this shit can make more sense for all of us. Definitely. Um, over the years, me personally, I've heard like a mass amount of music from you, mm -hmm. but my favorite, for some reason, is Free Smoke. Yeah. I just want to know like what, what frame of mind were you in when you created that song? I was all over the place. <laughs> I was all over the place when I created that, man, because um, at the time, I feel like somebody had took a shot at me, and, you know, I gave them a couple shots back, so that was some of the gist of it, and then the, um, the second verse was my favorite part of it, because it's like, it was just an overall picture of how this street shit really go, you know what I'm saying, and I just wanted to give niggas the real picture. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to give niggas the real exact picture. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I believe you did that. Yeah. I believe you really did. You really I'm gonna did. show you how you, I'm gonna show you how this shit be looking when you get in booking. Bullpen bunch of niggas from the other side. You gonna have to get, get it cooking. cooking. Like that's the real facts. facts. When you when you go in county and they lock you in the bullpen and it's nine ass niggas and you or nine west niggas and you, like that's the reality. Gotta Not know. just this shit where you popping bottles in the club and Jordans and belts. That ain't the all, that ain't the reality of it. The reality is you're gonna get up here and none of these niggas is gonna write you. Ain't none of these niggas gonna fly you a kite. Ain't none of these bitches gonna visit you. Ain't none of them gonna check for you. But one or two. That's the real fact. That's the real truth. You get what I'm saying? So I wanna put that in my music before I sell niggas a dream. I wanna tell you what's really going on. Fuck. Then, just so y'all know that it's real. You heard it from Boss himself, man. Uh, show love movement. Um, we about to touch bases again. Uh, uh, free smoke, but I wanna have a drink to oh, yeah. my people that's locked up. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because that that's real. So, would you like to No problem, champ.
Well, I say TV, Fugitive Inc. All in Moss, it's a show love movement. Yeah, free all the guys up the way too, man. Absolutely. Let's manifest it. Free them all. be home soon, man. You know the prison reform shit crazy right now. Bombs. Shout out to Meek and them niggas, man. I hope these niggas make a real change for niggas to stop getting railroaded for dumb shit. For real. And free Flip Porter. Fact, though. Fact. Free that nigga Flip, man. Y'all have a drink for him, too. How was it working with Flip? Oh, because you took a lot of what you was asking? As far as like, because you had the Holy Gang. Yeah. With you, Flip Porter, mm -hmm. Brittle Higgins. Mm -hmm. What was that like? The energy was crazy at that time, man. The whole city felt that. That's a fact. Energy was crazy, you know. Uh, Thank you. Like, no matter what, no matter how niggas slice it, no matter what, how, how you, you feel me? Because everybody got their own way to look at shit. But no matter how you slice it at that time, seeing three of the top niggas work and put that energy together, like, that shit was undeniable. Absolutely. You feel what I'm saying? Absolutely. As a, as a fan, that shit was undeniable at the time, and that was, it was a wave. Absolutely. And it definitely was a wave that a lot of people were, like, you know, had a lot of a lot of faith in as far as, like, you know, it's yeah. the holy game, the holy game going to do it right now. And I was a, someone that felt that way, too. Like, you know what? They just might do it right now. So I'm wondering, like, just like everybody else, what happened? Like, why is there not a holy game worth um, it? Ain't, it ain't no animosity or nothing like that. The way this shit played out. Um, Brillo had got a Brillo had got a um a deal with the Rough Riders. D, he had got a deal with D, um, Rough Riders General, and um, Flip basically had a bunch of open cases at the time and niggas didn't know. So Flip went to jail out the blue, and he was doing his Rough Riders thing, and I was doing my Show Love thing. So that's just the way it panned out, just timing. You know what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't it ain't nothing deeper than that. Time. Definitely. Although I was a great fan of the Holy Holy Gang, I, I, I like you better by yourself. True. Yeah, because a lot people of people, get a lot of more, people say that. Yeah, you you get more of a all in all. So a lot of people actually felt um that you were the Holy Gang as far as the glue goes, as far as the concrete goes, the meat of the mill. How do you feel about that? Um. With the uh, with the holy shit, I was calling myself holy before holy gang existed, so maybe that's why they feel like that. But I was calling myself surely the holy one. You feel me? Initially, so the holy gang shit to me, a lot of actually people, you were. Yeah, but now a lot of people took the holy gang shit because the way was the way it was going on. A lot of people took the holy gang shit to be me, Brillo, and Flip. But holy to me was anybody who's like top level in their craft. You get what I'm saying? So my vision for Holy Gang was everybody who's an elite. You get what I'm saying? Almost like Khaled and we the best. So it ain't like niggas is a group or a sign together. It's just a uniform that's like, yeah, I'm holy. All right, he doing this thing over there. He holy. He doing this thing over there. He, he, you feel what I'm saying? So everybody could pool their resources together as far as like uh, reach. So you put a project out and Everybody might get behind it. I mean, on IG or sure. Facebook or whatever. But it ain't no cut. It ain't no. It ain't no whack niggas where it's just manufactured. Like this is really the nicest niggas and, and bitches or whatever. So that was what I envisioned it to be. But we was rocking at the time, so it ended up us. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Holy Gang group. Yeah. Arlen Moss solo. Show me the holy one. Yeah. Show me the holy one. That's fine. Yeah. All that great shit. Mm -hmm. So, how do you feel? Do you feel as though you're better off? In what regard? In regard as a group. Or to as the holy one. That's fine. Oh, nah. I love my hand. I love my hand the way it is, man. You feel me? Like, uh, I, I started off, you know, 
I started off as a solo MC. And I came up battling, putting out tapes and shit. And the city grew alike and they took they took to me and shit for years. So you feel me? I I've been doing this this I've been doing this. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't like me being solo is like it ain't like it's a shock or unexpected. Like I've been solo. Like we we didn't do a project. We did a couple of songs together. And I fuck with them niggas lyrics. Yeah, with the one and only Sholy Holy, yeah. Arden Moss S five hundred, Show Love Movement. Ooh. Um Boss. How you been at? Hey, hey. Sholy the holy one. Sholy the holy one. Yo, can you get the people some bug? A little song or whatever, then gotta be nothing crazy. I have something light for you, chat. Hey. I don't never keep no work in my money safe. The fiend told me that this crack got a funny taste. Mm. To this day, I can see the look on my mother's face when I told her again that I beat this fucking case. Mm. And everybody put their miles on your Michelin's, but they don't ride with you till you're sentencing. Nah, look. I went from making block sales to the block sales, but I'm gravy as long as it's gravy on my oxtail. Uh, oh, oh, I done did it, I done bit it in them blocks where great days after a visit seeing you got mail. Uh, Supreme work for the clientele. So much shit that I buy and sell my eye is scale. Yep. I'm trying to make a nine stretch in that Pyrex and my wrist is looking like I'm trying to light an L. <laughs> I mean, you know when this canoe in five minutes in that Mikey, niggas know what I be doing. Arm and hammer. Plus the arms and hammers, we face off. I'm trying to keep my face off the camera. Couple weeks ago, I had a great talk with Nana. <laughs> she told me anybody's capable of anything, especially when they trying to get it by any means. That's why a crown cut and never show you who really came, uh, nigga. That was deep. Bars. Are you talking about the game sound like you talk? It wasn't light at all. I'm in and out like a crack house. I'm in and out. You know I usually give niggas three, four minutes. I'm in and out like a robbery. <laughs> Oh, you want no. you, you want me to get out of the way? Yeah. How we rocking? Who need it? Who want it? Well, no, somebody want to pick an ugly chick. Drop the, drop the <laughs> fire <laughs> emoji. You want to see my beard? Like, oh, Look at the beard. <laughs> but yeah, drop, drop the fire <laughs> emoji. Yeah, just Let me see y'all in there so I could. Oh, boy. Who pregnant where? What? <laughs> do, not, do not drop. This is an off-white edition. This is a collectible. <laughs> This is Virgil Abloh, Off White, Moet, Rose, Limited Edition. Show love, show love, on the Show love, moms. yeah. Show you the holy one. Yeah, we still rocking? You can, keep it, you can keep it rocking. I can, oh, I can still, rock with you and check the live at the same blue. time. Okay, I ain't spending nothing that was guys, man. You, you no it. way. What made you get into <coughs> merchandise? What's up, bro? Um, <laughs> Well, made me get into the merch shit with one people to. That nigga's loud as shit over there, Ken Folk. Hold up. Hey, yo, um, yeah, what made me get into the, um, peace, peace. What made me get into the, um, the merch shit was like, this, this was the, this was on my album cover. Or whatsoever, the show love shit. And I just, I genuinely liked it. And I thought it would be something dope. And, and it was universal. So I knew that. A lot of people be like too absorbed in themselves and they'll make shirts that's like they name. And you know you a real nigga, so I'm a real nigga. It's like I'm not wearing no Jay Z shirt. You get what I'm saying? I'm not wearing a but I wear rock wear. You get what I'm saying? So my shit was just like show love, so it's connected to me. But it ain't making a nigga walk around in a show me t shirt. That's weird. And that makes a lot of sense. So show love. Like I said, it's universal. It's a concept that I feel like everybody need to fuck with because, like, you know, hating for what? We got Tuck, Pyru, Jody, Kyle Foster. Listen, we drinking fine champagne. I don't even know none of these people. Show me the holy one. Yeah. S5. I'm about to sit down. Yeah, yeah, 
I'm listening to who? God's man, God's man, Bonzi said what's good. Well, I said, well, I said, TV, we here with Shirley, the only one. Uh huh. The one and only. Just went crazy on. He just spit these bars first. He said he was going to go light. He went real hard. I spit these bars to make your head shake. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this has been wonderful, and it's still, it's still hey, going yo, Tuck on. Hey, yo, Tuck said you a beat, Tuck. Oh. But like. Tuck get the bottle. Because <laughs> it's why I say TV. It's why I say TV, Tuck get she the bottle. She just won without even, she just did it. Damn, see, you got to take that back. He not a beat, Tuck. You a pickle, Tuck. He gave right. you the bottle. Right. But like. See what I'm saying? Just because. That's who got it? Tuck got it? Tuck got the bottle. That's what it is, then. Tell Tuck she come pick it up from Fugitive TV. When, when, who went the other coons? She said, why I say, Chief? Why I say? Why I say? How you been at? We showing love. That's the, what it is. All in Moss. Show Holy. Show the Holy One. Oh, I'm dead. I'm just saying that. <laughs> Yo, that shit was fucked up. Yo, my, my Facebook my Facebook was Sholey. They clipped me, and and they made me switch the shit to my government. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, I tell it was for religious purposes. That's what I did. Yeah, somebody did some hating shit. One day they were just like, yo, you got to show an ID that say you show me. I'm like, what, bro? And I'm only, I only kept saying all in Mars because a lot, there is a lot of people. You got you got a lot of people that know you, like, as far, well, for Facebook. Yeah. That's all that is, but... This is surely the only one. Hey, yo, my bad. Tuck the, top the winner, y'all. I'm about to get this shit back to Kev, yo. Yo, Tuck, congratulations. Where you from? Where you from in your city? Yeah. I, I grew up I grew up all over the city. I'm a North End nigga. Like, I'm a North nigga, Trump Alive nigga. But I lived all over Bridgeport. I lived on Charles Street. I lived on East Main. I lived on Carroll. It's on a crack on uh, Barnum. Like, everybody know me from the North, but I started hustling over here. I'm saying my parents, my grandparents, they used to live on the west, so I used to be on Norman Street a lot as a kid. I just don't know. I know everybody hey, was. So, being as though you've seen a lot with a lot of your experiences, can you give the people like, yo, bro, hold up, yo, hold on, hold on, man. From your experiences in life, all the things you've seen, places you've not been, people you've not encountered, all the areas you've not seen, yeah. what is one key life survival skill that you can give the world right now? Um, one of the key survival skill that I could get a world that shit is that work for me is not to hang around people having an agenda, cause a lot of times that shit'll have you in some shit that you don't know you in. You get what I'm saying? So you hanging with niggas cause they pop bottles, or you hanging with niggas cause they shooters or whatever they supposed to be, and that shit ain't genuine, and you don't know what the fuck they into. You get what I'm saying? So people I fuck with is genuine, and you know what I'm saying? If if you if you bite the bullet for some genuine shit, then that's God hand. But if you running behind niggas cause they wearing Fendi and you getting indicted with these niggas, you ain't signed up for that. You feel what I'm saying? If you hanging with niggas cause they shooters and they think you pussy, then what? You know what I'm saying? What's gonna stop them from going upside your head one night? You get what I'm saying? So I hang with niggas I genuinely fuck with and I don't get wrapped up in a lot of dumb shit. Just tagging along with niggas. Niggas I fuck with 10 plus, 15 plus. So, what I would tell niggas is stop hanging around niggas having your agendas or whatsoever because you don't know what you're getting yourself into. You don't know who being looked at by the feds. You don't know who telling on this many niggas. You don't know who's the informant. You don't know who ran off on this plug in another town. You don't know none of this shit. You get what I'm saying? So, you hanging with this nigga because he popping bottles. He owed two niggas for 500 grams in, in Stanford or wherever the fuck you from. You don't know that. And when they tear his shit up and you in the car with him. They gonna say. So me, I fuck with I fuck with niggas that I genuinely fuck with, that I know, that I came up with, or that I genuinely respect on some on, on some man shit. And now and, and that's something that I hope everyone just paid attention to because he just gave you a life lesson that you may be aware of, but you weren't aware of it until he just told you. So, I just hope you pay attention to things like that. You know, every day in life you're supposed to learn. That was something that you can learn from. So, right. take that and do the right thing with it. I teach you all at home. So, how, how was that for you? Um, the way 
I grew up, man, I feel like I got the best of both worlds and shit because, like, I seen, I feel like I seen both sides of the spectrum. Shout out to Mr. Moss, too. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, I feel like I got the, I got, I feel like I got both ends of the spectrum growing up because growing up, my mother was addicted to heroin. And I don't say that on no, like, pity shit. Like, my mother was ill, but my mother was addicted to dope. And my father was a school teacher, but my father was like, you know, my father from the terrorist. So my father put me on this shit and make me read this and look at this in the dictionary, so on and so forth. But it also had me around the G's at a young age, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and the shit that I seen my mother go through, I just got exposed to a lot of shit. So I seen what it was like when things was going good and, and I seen what it was like when things was going bad. So. I feel, I feel like that made me ill because I, I don't be in a hurry to judge nobody. You know what I'm saying? I understand why your shit could be fucked up. And I understand what it's like when your shit lit too. So it's just for me, I feel like it's understanding that that makes me me. Like I understand a lot of shit. I understand why a lot of shit is the way it is. Well, I say TV, we still here. We still rolling and we still live. We still open with all the monsters. Show me the only one. <laughs> Show me the only one. Yeah. The one and only. Um. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you wanna? Is there anything else you wanna give to the people? Because that was very insightful what you just said. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. I want people to learn. I want people to. I ain't here to preach. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can, you know what I mean, I kick game when I can. I would really appreciate that if you can give them one more. Well, I say is this. We in an era where a lot of people trying to start their own businesses and be their own bosses and be entrepreneurs and that's love and I respect it uh, to the utmost. And a lot of times um, you rely on people or your circle to support you, and you could get caught up in the uh, you could get caught up in the bouncing of ideas to where you might feel like something is a bad idea and I might feel like it's good and we be stagnated and. And, and your ideas. If you feel something is a good idea, it's for a reason. Like something, something spoke to you, something touched you in a way where you feel like something is a good idea and it could work. So instead of arguing or being stagnated with your people about what's a good idea and what's a bad idea, the, re the results can show you whether something was a good idea or a bad idea. So if you feel like you want to do A or you feel like you want to do B, you don't got to waste a whole bunch of time going back and forth with your niggas or your, or your homegirls or whatever. You could just Put the energy forth and put the effort forth, and, and, and you'll see whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. And if you fail, get back at it. Give it another go. Nerd, I'm surely the only one. The only one. That's right. We're coming live and direct. Fugitive Inc. YSAT TV. Thanks for, thanks for coming, man. You already, bro. This was very. This is very fun. Sholy the Holy One, man. Sholy 5-4 on IG. Sholy 5-4 on SoundCloud, man. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know how we coming, man. Trumble live to the ad, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Hey, yo. Plenty bitches on me. Plenty niggas on some other shit. But I'm official on some word the mother shit. Federalis chasing a couple niggas I'm running with. Drama I'm bringing. I promise you don't want nothing. Well, I say, boys. Well, I say. Welcome to Well, I say TV. I'm your host, TTL. Your baby mother's favorite dark skin guy. Hey, 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 hey! We're sponsored by Fugitive Inc. Once again, YSA TV. Don't be a beat up or a brick. YSA, brother. YSA. Tell the people who you are, where you from, what you represent. Pudge Paru, from Queens, New York, but I'm out here in Bridgeport. I don't rep no side of town, I fuck with Bridgeport. I fuck with everybody. I'm with the real rights. I'm the big blood, you know, I'm rapping. Mm -hmm. Do you know how to dance? What? Do you know how to dance? Bust a funky friend. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna smack the shit out of Kelly's questions. I was mama's old as shit. Yo, mama's like a year and seven months. What type of shit is this? <laughs> how is he? She good, my nigga. She in the house. She just got over a period. <laughs> you mad? Hell no. She ain't bleeding around my house no more. <laughs> what does she mix with? Nothing. She's a gangster. <laughs> if you could breed her, what would you breed? Nothing. Ain't nobody touching my dog. Oh, come <laughs> on. Nothing's touching my dog. It's my child. 
I already backed out of mad niggas. Nah, you're not touching my dog. No. I can understand that. He feel like his dog is his child, so he can't touch that. You gotta protect your child. For real. It's not a game. We love mamas. But what's up with all the Facebook drama? You don't know about that. I don't got no drama. I don't got no stalkers <laughs> no more. I don't got nothing. I just be chilling. Would you like to elaborate on you got stalkers? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> she might be watching this shit. Who's she? Nobody. <laughs> 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 you might see her at Pose once in a while. <laughs> Everybody be at phones once in a while, you heard me? Why I say TV, don't be a beat up or a prick. Oh, so, oh, would you like to play a game with me? I don't care. We're not playing a game. That shit was not brought to you by We're going to call this game Tech. He tried to ride me for 175. Ho, 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 ho. We're going to call this game. Hey, yo, Kev, man, you can't have the interviews and talk over them, Chan. I'm sorry, that's ho fault. This game is called Test Your Gangster. Are you willing to participate? Yeah. All right. What year was the blood set? Excuse me. What year was the blood set established? A. Nineteen seventy-two. B. Nineteen eighty-five. C. Nineteen ninety-nine. None of the above. All different sets was created in different years. That's wrong. It's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you going to tell a big blood? 1972. 1972. It's not. All right. Question number two. Yeah, Who were the first the leaders world. of the East Coast Bloods? Was it Omar Porte, Leonard McKenzie, or Pyrus and Blood Raw? What? <laughs> I don't know where they get me. Some Google shit. <laughs> <laughs> OG Mac told, but he brought nine trades to the East Coast. That was the first East Coast hood. But I don't know. Y'all better get Kevin. Do you have it? These some trick questions. Do you have it? Do you have it? Nothing to do with this. Do you have it? You came from. Nothing to do with this. Post probably with himself. All right, next question. <laughs> next question. Next question. Why I say TV? Hey, hey, hey. They was watching hey. up raw. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, from 1972 to 2005, how many blacks have been incarcerated on the East Coast? Eight? We're not going to do this, my nigga. We're not going to do this, my nigga. I have no idea. I go to SRG when I get locked up. That's why I don't try to go to jail. <laughs> I've been I've been a blood since 1997. I, I don't know about any of these weird ass questions you're asking. I don't know who Freaky Todd, Mr. Cheeks is. I Just to let you me. know, we had a secret group chat, and these are the questions that the people wanted to ask. So I took these questions from 15 people. All of y'all, all of y'all, either the people that ask decided to ask me these dumbass <laughs> questions. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with people? All right. So, what does CK mean? Facing death, spray the tech, made a mess. Think the Lord when I wake up, cause they damn black.